Have you ever wanted to add physics to your After Effects composition? Using Blender Ray 2 with Blender might be the perfect answer. In this breakdown, I'll show you some of the things I experimented with when bringing Blender rigid body physics into After Effects. So let's get into it. To begin with, I laid some text out in After Effects and then just exported a frame for reference in Blender. In Blender, I recreated the text and instead of converting directly to mesh, I used the remesh modifier to get some nice quad faces on the text. This seemed to play a little nicer in the physics simulations in my experiments. Continuing on, I lined up all the text to match my reference frame and then went about separating each character of the mesh. Originally, I did that by selecting each letter but then realized I could do it much more easily by separating by loose parts. I went through the whole process and started to play with physics and then Blender crashed. That's not a very common occurrence in my experience, but I didn't save the project so I had to go back through and do the whole thing again. Uh, Note to self, always save your projects early in the creation process. Saves a lot of hassle. I added an icosphere with rigid body physics and made it passive type and animated so that I can animate the rotation. I also increased the friction and bounciness so that it creates some more chaos as it drags and bounces the letters around. One important note here is that in order to have objects inside another object when you're using physics, the collision shape must be mesh. If you use other types of collision shapes, the objects will simply explode out. I also like to use a solidifier modifier just to give the mesh a little bit of thickness. Shout out to The Ember, the developer of Quick Rigid, a free extension on the Blender extension marketplace, who happens to be related to me. He's done a great job of this add-on that lets you quickly select different settings for Quick Rigid physics. In this case, I copied the rigid body settings from the letter B to the other letters. You can also find that in the object menu under rigid body and copy from active. And that's pretty much it for Blender. I played around with the friction and bounciness of the letters and experimented a bit, adding in Suzanne. I also added a magnetic force field on an empty. And this is one of the most powerful features of Blender is there is a ton of physics options that you can play around with and a ton of force fields that you can use to create very complex physics animations. I baked the physics simulation and then used Blender A2 to export the data of all the letters and the camera back to After Effects. This creates a new null for every object with all the transformation data applied. Now for the second half, in After Effects, I converted the text to a shape layer and then used the Free Motion Tools Classic script to explode the shape into its individual letters. It's important to make sure your shape layers are 3D and in the right position before doing this. Once in their own layers, I need to parent all the shape layers to the appropriate null layer. And it's so satisfying to see the physics from Blender in After Effects on After Effects layers. Now we can have some fun with colors and compositing and change things as we like. I went through a range of experiments the first thing I played around with was using 2D shapes to encompass the 3D physics, but I didn't really like the direction it was going, so I decided to bring in the Icosphere spaces as shape layers using Blender A2 again. I also made the letters 3D in After Effects by changing the render engine to the advanced render engine. I liked the look of this, but it does come with some limitations. One which actually affected me down the line when I couldn't use the blending modes that I wanted to use. But I overcame this by pre-composing all the letters into their own comp. I also decided I wanted to change the color of every face of the icosphere so that I could play around with different effects. 
But because there's 80 different pre-composed faces, doing this manually was going to take a while. So I ended up making a small script that searches for pre-comps with similar names and changes the color and blending mode of the shape layer inside. Finally, after experimenting with lots of different colors and blending modes, I decided I liked this muted pastel bright color scheme. There's a lot of different ways you can incorporate Blender and all the capabilities that Blender offers into After Effects using Blender 8 2. This is only scratching the surface of what's possible, but hopefully there'll be some more experiments to come. Thank you.